Okay, hey, this is probably as good a place to start a ministry as any place, and that it would be in the uh, the book of John, uh, chapter 3. And I'm using Bible Gateway, uh, the New International Version in Bible Gateway. Um, Bible Gateway is, is, a, is a resource that I use practically every version of the of the Bible available to man you can find on Bible Gateway they they it's all it's all available for free um, they break it right down for you I mean they've, they've got every translation now I use NIV because it's really easy to read it's really easy on my eyes um, it sounds like everyday speech that I would carry on with somebody that uh, a friend of mine for instance um, but a lot of words are, um, and which, which is something I'll, you know, I hope to show you here in a little bit. It's the last, it's the last chapter of the book of John. There's a conversation that takes place between Jesus and Peter, and uh, the NIV tends to translate um, love, or they translate a word into our English, North American English language, uh, the word love, when in reality what they're really talking about there is two completely different types of love that the interpreters of the New International Version of the Bible failed to interpret correctly. Um, yes, it's love, and yes, they interpret correctly, but it's in the original Greek is what I'm trying to is what I'm trying to explain to you. In the original Greek, um, it goes into much more depth, and their conversation takes on a lot more meaning because the Greeks break love down into different types of love. Um, whereas in the English language, unless we, unless we add some more adjectives um, to the word, to the, uh, to the word of, to the word love, then it's, it's really kind of hard to know in what context we are using the word love. Okay. But with the Greek, they had specific words that you automatically knew what type of love that they were talking about. And what I'm, what I'm talking about, say for instance, um, philia is a, a type of love. It's known as family love. That's where we get the word uh, philia or phileo. It's, um, it's where we get the word Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Um, that's where that word comes from. Our word erotic comes from the Greek word eros. Um, and that's, you know, a very sensual type of love. Agape love was uh, another word that was used in that conversation that I'll be alluding to a little bit later. But um, agape love is uh, God's love. It's, it's the way you would love God. It's the way that God loves us is agape love. So those are some of the different types of love that I'm talking about that the Greeks had specific names for. And these are words that the NIV just tends to kind of gloss over and skip over. And um, in the Greek, which is Bible Hub, uh, Bible Hub is what I go to. It's my go-to resource for digging into the original Greek scripture. And, and I can show you, and that's what I love so much about this particular software, is I can uh, back out of this and put my put my image up here in the, uh, in the corner of the screen. And I can jump right in and read along, you know, read the scripture to you. And um, we can go from there. But John chapter 3 is Jesus' Jesus's conversation with a Pharisee, um, a Pharisee named Nicodemus. And he is a teacher of the law. Um, and they have a discussion about uh, a man being born again. And in here, Nicodemus um, asks surely they cannot a man cannot enter his mother's womb a second time to be reborn and Nicodemus is looking at Jesus's analogy from a physical standpoint and Jesus is clearly speaking from a spiritual standpoint and um, through this conversation this is where um, let me see where I'm going here this is where John 316 comes from I don't know if you've been watching football games um, Football games, basketball games, most any sporting event, you know, somebody's going to hang up a sign that says John 316. Well, this is what they're talking about. If, if, if you didn't know that to begin with, John is obviously the book of John, which can be found in the New Testament of the Bible. 
The number 3 refers to the third chapter, and 16 refers to verse 16. So whenever somebody quotes scripture like 1 Corinthians 4.29 or 1 Corinthians 5.1, say Matthew um, chapter 3, verse 2, Matthew 3.2, that's what they're referring to. It's uh, the book of Matthew, or the book that they're alluding to in the Bible is, is what they talk about first. Um, then um, the number that uh, comes after the book is the chapter, and then the number that comes after this, or the third, you know, the second number, which comes after the, or the, the second number, John 3.16. Anyway, I think you understand. It's the verse. The last number in, in that in that series is the verse. So, right here we have um, John three sixteen, and I've written this in pink. But um, it says, "For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but will have everlasting life." Preceding this is a really neat analogy. It's a really neat story. Um, John 3.14 and John 3.15, um, it's, it's full of a lot of meat, and it says some stuff, and it doesn't say some stuff, but um, I'm going to be going, I'm going to be alluding back to this particular scripture, because when Jesus mentions this, just as, just as Moses lift, lifted up the snake in the wilderness, where Jesus is talking about that uh, is actually Numbers uh, the book of Numbers in the Old Testament, chapter 21, uh, verses 4 through 9, right here, the bronze snake. And I actually gave a, uh, gave a sermon on that one day in the jail, at the Marion County Jail. And it's when I studied it, and it's just five quick verses, um, there was a lot of information in there. And it's, it's very interesting how you can apply what happened then to the Jews, to what's going on and what's happening with us today in the year 2018, soon to be 2019. Um, it's really interesting. But going back to John 3.16, John 3.17, and then following out the rest of the verse, John 3.17 gets bypassed many times. And in my opinion, John 3.17 is just as wonderful of news as John 3.16 is. And John 3.17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but he sent Jesus into the world to save the world through him, through Jesus. He didn't send him here to condemn the world. He sent him here to save the world. And Jesus goes on and says, Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly, and what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Okay? I've got news for you in the first place. Um, if you're living in darkness, don't be fooled by the darkness, because God already sees everything you're doing. Um, and it talks about it talks about exactly that in the Bible several places. You can't hide from God. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can think that God can't see. He sees it all. He hears it all. Um, that has been made extremely obvious to me. And yeah, I I don't glow in the dark. I'm not perfect. I have a uh, I have a reputation at my job where I'm a little obstinate and I'm uh, I'm a little rebellious, uh, especially toward management. But then again, I'm not greedy. And I work by the hour, I show up to work, I do my job, and when I'm screwed with, um, I have a tendency to take that mess and uh, stick it back in somebody else's lap. And I show up, I do my job, and I have excellent rapport with uh, the, uh, the people that I serve out on my route. Um, may not have excellent rapport with the men on the dock, uh, with the loaders, I may not have real excellent rapport with the managers, with the freight managers, um, but uh, you know, I uh, 
I think I do a, a really good job, and I think that I'm admired and by most of the men that I have to work with, and um, you know, uh, we go from there. And I was a truck driver long before I was a born again Christian. I'll just I'll just put that out there, and I guarantee you to some of you guys who are watching this video that that uh, work with me, I guarantee you. You would you, you don't like me now. You would not have liked me before Jesus found me. I guarantee it. Um, I would have made sure of the fact that you didn't like me. Um, there weren't many people that I liked between the ages of twenty and thirty, and uh, you wouldn't have liked that guy. I guarantee you would not have liked that guy at all. Um, I burned a lot of bridges. Anyway, I'm getting off the subject and. Um, it's a hostile work environment where I work and I try to make the most of it. And I apologize for going off down that trail. But um, anyway, let's talk some more about Jesus. Um, I wasn't a, I wasn't a good guy before Jesus found me. But thank God Jesus found me. I'm not the man I, I need to be by any means. But thank God I'm not the man I used to be. Um, because you wouldn't have liked that guy. Anyway, so um, God sees everything. He sees it all. And... Um, there, there were some things that I've done in my past that I am absolutely ashamed of now. And I know God, he was watching the whole time. He was watching, he was listening. Um, I drug him through it. You know, if Jesus lives in me, if Jesus lives in my heart, uh, if his spirit lives in me, then it entered me when I was baptized, when I was age 12. And uh, he's been with me ever since. And... Um, I've, I've, I've pulled him through some, some really cesspool situations, I guess, but, uh, he lifted me out of it. He cleaned me up and now I run with a, uh, with a crowd of men who, uh, who experience miracles. Um, there's a, there's a, a brother in Jesus right now, uh, on my, uh, on my YouTube video, um, channel. His name's uh, Jim Turley. He's a soldier. He was a uh, army um, soldier for 17 years, and um, this man has. I mean, if you get the chance to go to my channel, which is Servant Missionary Thad Linton, um, get the chance to go to my YouTube channel, watch that video on Jim Turley because it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, just he's just a walking miracle. That guy is right there. But anyway, yeah. So here it is. Here's John 3:16, and um, it's a pretty powerful verse. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall have everlasting life, will not perish. And then John three seventeen. For God did not come into the world to condemn the world; He came into the world to save the world. Um, that is, that's good news. That is great news. So if you've got somebody condemning you, you got somebody pointing their finger at you, throwing you under the bus, uh, stabbing you in the back, that's not God. Okay, that's not of God. Um, that's that's of the enemy a principality needs a personality and in this world principles need persons and persons ironically need principles it may not be a good principle but uh, people need principles to live by so a principality needs a personality and if uh, if you've got somebody accusing you if you've got somebody pointing the finger at you that's not uh, that's not of God so um, with that, I'm going to end this video and uh, let you know it's been nice, it's been fun, and the next video that I do is going to be right here about this story right here in the book of Numbers. Um, it's it's really good. There's, there's a lot there. So, um, yeah, that'll be the next video. So, anyway, thank you for bearing with me on this one, and um, we'll look forward to doing another one. Thank you.